Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dane Explains. Quite a while ago now, I did a video on artificial gravity. When we think of artificial gravity, we normally think about ways of providing gravity for people who are spending a large amount of time in the weightlessness of space. Because prolonged weightlessness can cause a host of issues, like bone loss, even issues with our eyesight, and also because we're adapted to living in an environment with gravity. So, it would also make getting around and getting things done much easier. Well, what about living on worlds like the Moon and Mars that have some gravity, but not as much as Earth? We don't yet know if low gravity worlds will have the same negative side effects like zero gravity does. Also, it can be hard to get around in lower gravity due to the lower friction with the ground. So how do we deal with that? Can we have artificial gravity when there's already some gravity? Let me explain. Something that's not immediately obvious is that the Earth is the largest planet in our solar system with a solid surface. It's also the densest rocky planet as well. So, no matter what planet, moon, or asteroid we plan to explore or live on in our solar system, it's going to have lower gravity than Earth. At this point, we don't know what gravity level we humans will start to have negative health effects at if we're exposed for prolonged periods. We don't even know if the better health effects are a sliding scale. Maybe they just get worse the less gravity we have, or maybe there's some kind of watershed threshold at which these health effects kick in suddenly. Either way, if we humans are going to live and work on other worlds in our solar system, we're going to have to learn to live on worlds with lower gravities than Earth. First, let's get the just dad weight out of the way. Adding weight to someone to make them feel heavier would probably help with issues like bone loss. But as every graduate of elementary school would be aware, everything, no matter how heavy they are, fall at the same velocity. In fact, this was demonstrated by astronaut David Scott on the moon during Apollo 15, when he dropped a feather and a hammer together, and they both fell at the same rate, since the moon has no atmosphere to slow the feather down. So. Weights are probably not the best solution. In space, how we create artificial gravity is pretty well understood. We may not do it for logistical and cost reasons, but get a large cylinder and spin it and you've created artificial gravity. Doing that on the surface of a world is not as easy. That's because when you spin something, anything inside of it will have two forces acting on it. One is the gravity of the world you're on, and the other is the centripetal force pushing you to the wall. These two forces work together to create a force vector that is not straight down or to the wall of the cylinder. This would make it so any person trying to stand would feel like they're standing on an incline. Now, a way to fix that is to just incline the wall of the cylinder perpendicular to the vector of the force, which turns the cylinder into a cone. That brings its own issues though, because the vector will only be perpendicular at one point on the cone. If you get closer to the center of the cone, you will feel the floor being inclined again, and you will feel less gravity. Going away from the center makes the floor feel inclined in the opposite direction, and you get heavier. One fix for this is an idea called a gravity train. Basically, you fix the issue by getting rid of the rest of the cone. You're living on a ring-shaped train that goes around continuously, hence the name gravity train. The drawback, of course, is the train would need to be huge to give you a decent amount of area, and getting on and off the train without stopping would be tricky. So, it would only be ideal for small habitats, which makes these issues less of a deal. Although the Soviet Union did an experiment where several people lived and worked inside of a centrifuge that mimicked the gravity train on a small scale. Although the gravity the participants experienced was higher than 1G since, well, the experiment was done on Earth. So what about big habitats? Let's revisit the cone. It would need one final tweak to fix it up for the most part. With one caveat I'll mention in a second. If instead of a cone shape, you curve the cone to match the force vector, you can make it so you don't have to feel any incline at any point on the inside of its surface. And the shape you now get is a bowl. The shape is actually ideal because it fits nicely into the naturally occurring bowl-shaped craters 
which are common on small airless worlds. Now, the caveat I mentioned earlier is that you'll still have variable gravity. It'd be the same gravity of the world you're on at the hub and would be its highest at the rim of the bowl. This has its advantages, however, because getting in and out of the bowl could easily be done at its center, where you're basically not moving relative to the ground. To avoid health issues, the places people spend most of their time could be around the rim area. Places like warehouses or landing pads, where low gravity is better, could be closer to the hub. This is ideal because the geometry of the bowl leads to the greatest area being along the rim, where most people will be spending the majority of their time anyway. Any falling object moving perpendicular to the hub, like a person jumping for instance, would tend to fall away from the hub of the habitat. If you jump towards the hub, your trajectory would curve in the direction that the habitat was rotating in, and when you jumped away, it would produce the opposite curve. The larger the habitat, the less noticeable these effects would be. So, the effects of the artificial portion of the gravity would be similar to the effects I described in my artificial gravity video, becoming more noticeable the closer to the rim you got. So there would have to be design considerations when it comes to things like stairs and ladders. So it's just a few design considerations. Our more adventurous grandchildren might find themselves living in a bowl. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon. Link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.